Hmm. And it's also not, it's not an insult to the writer because oftentimes you'll be on set and realize that the pacing of the moment doesn't work for the dialogue or that you have to delete a few lines or just even a couple of words in order to make the pacing work or that maybe, maybe you realize something's redundant, which is often, which is usually the case with a lot of writings. You, you make things redundant and you realize I can replace it with a shot. I don't need to say it, and so you know you're on set, and um, if to say that it's a blueprint is not an insult or to lessen the writing, it's just that the realities of production, and when you have actors who might actually have a better idea, that it becomes a team effort. Things change, and that's yeah. okay. In my experience, you know, we're, we're we're not talking about too many cooks in the kitchen. We're talking about a genuine give and take between professionals who who've had their experiences with certain things. And, and luckily, I have enough experience, and Mark has enough experience to say, that's not a good idea or that is a good idea. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take and leave what we, what we think is, is worth, um, or that can help the show. Yeah. That being said, I, I, di I have thrown a hissy fit before. Did you? Yeah, I, you, pr you probably don't remember because you were actually working, but I nearly lost my mind. Wait, when? when? I came to the El Pollo par Loco parking lot, and you showed me the shooting script that you had drawn up, and you gave Bum's line to Danny, I think, in the script of time clock would be ever done, or I think it was time was muster. That's episode three. Yeah. But when I showed up, I think you were just leaving to go and shoot that. And so I saw that you had made a change to my beautiful, beautiful words. And <laughs> I have a very distinct memory of me standing in the parking lot holding the script and saying, if the bum doesn't say time mustard, then everything is ruined. <laughs> but it's in and, there. Then, and then, yeah, I think you said, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it that way. Like, it was a big deal to me, and I think that you were able to see that it was a big deal to me, and you're like, okay, we'll, we'll do it both ways. We'll shoot it. Yeah, why not? And then that's the cut that ended up making it in there, and I think that's the only time where I ever, like, lost my mind because <laughs> somebody else. And I just love that I was in an El Pollo Loco parking lot screaming about time mustard. <laughs> now, this is kind of a great bit of acting from Callie. Yeah, she pointed out... What's my character doing? Oh yeah, one day she and then, comes over and goes, so what am I doing in this scene? And Mark and I realized, we have no idea. So uh, let's... Uh, get in a sandwich? Let's get, to, let's get to Callie here. So we have Bum, and we have Nikita falling in love because she doesn't believe him that she's a bum. That's Callie, just, just alone. Being who I remember being at a lot of college parties, like, why is everybody else banging and I'm just standing out here by myself? Yeah. And my, it might have been my UGG boots that I would wear to my college well, parties. Well, I, I would say it was probably your skirt. Your, it might have been that. Your, right, your above-the-knee skirt. So everyone knew you were a harlot. I had, I had the legs. I can pull it off. But yeah, this, this is so her realizing. So we didn't realizing. know what the hell to do with Callie. Because uh, in, the, in the show, we refer to her as Mary. And Mary, Callie, whatever. We had written this character for a joke in episode three. Yeah. And we realized that we'd only written her for... A joke. And then we had asked this very nice actress to come and hang out <laughs> with us several nights in a row over a several month period. And uh, we actually came across this problem in subsequent episodes, which we dealt with very creatively. And I look forward to talking about that. But, but for specifically for Callie, we had to come up with a whole way of justifying her existence. Yeah. In the show. In the show, in episode four, which was that she is the thread between the three stories of of Lance, uh, Drake, and Bum. And this, yeah, this is a moment for me to learn something about screenwriting just from seeing what was going on here. Uh, I thought it was really brilliant that we're seeing all of these interactions from her point of view at this point because she looks to her left and we see these guys and then we're gonna see her look a little bit in the other direction and we'll move into the other story. Yeah, so here right we see there. And that's the kind of thing that you don't, you know, you're not going to think about when you're writing it the first time. And it's just, it's just a brilliant little bit of editing that really changes the whole show. 